هو الذي خلق لكم he in fact is the same one who created you i'm translating this way on purpose it's a strange way of translating but i'm doing that deliberately the word the name of allah in this ayah is actually a dhamir it's a pronoun huwa a pronoun from a language perspective ya'udu ila ma sabaq it goes back to what came before it in other words allah is saying the same one who had created you before and and you weren't you didn't even have this body and he put you to sleep then he put you inside of your mothers then the one who gives you life in this world and will give you death again that same one is the one khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jami'an he's the same one who created for you whatever's in the earth all together all of it now what's the connection the first thing to understand is the connection with the previous ayah he was you were in the closest company of allah which illustrates how much love allah has for you Allah didn't do that for other creations the way he did that for you. And then he decided that he will build you a home on this earth, on this planet. In the entire universe he picked this small planet for our, you know, our habitat, our home. And then he says he goes out of his way to say that he created especially for you. He went out of his way for your sake to put to create things on this earth all together, meaning everywhere on this earth there is something that you can benefit from. That is for you. This is a profound statement. scholars were like baffled by this statement how is everything in the world created for us how is a mosquito created for me you know the atheist asked this question right well, how are cockroaches created for me explain that one to me or how is this created for me or that created for me? like they'll they'll ask this question because like, if you if everything is for me then no thanks i don't like bacteria or i don't want virus or i don't want this right you know they'll say how is that for me The response to that is actually you have you have to take a step back and take a deeper look at what Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying. The idea of benefit for a materialist, when a some when a person can only think in the material sense, their idea of benefit can only be what material. There is no other benefit in their view because they've become entirely materialistic. ذلك مبلغهم من العلم ولم يريد إلا الحياة الدنيا ذلك مبلغهم من العلم He didn't want anything but worldly life. That's the extent of their knowledge. That's as far as they can think. So when they think of anything in the world, they say, "How does this physically benefit me? How does this, in some, you know, in consumption, in my wealth, in my status, in my security, how is this material good for me?" That's the only way they can think of benefit. And that's the tragedy of a human being who forgets that he's not just made of a body, but he's also made of a ruh. And there's a benefit to the body, and there's also a benefit too. the ruh what allah created on this earth so much of it is a benefit to our body and so much of it is a benefit to our our ruh there are things on this earth that terrify us their alligators are terrifying snakes or cobras are terrifying these things when they have their fangs out are like they'll they they'll petrify you just out of fear you know and these things are a reminder to a believer if allah can create this kind of fear on the earth if i disobey him What kind of fear can he create in the akhirah? What kind of punishment can he make in the akhirah? You understand? When there's some kind of thing you find disgusting in the world, you find snails disgusting, cockroaches disgusting. If you think this ugliness or this insect or this creature that is surrounded by filth and you hate it, you can't stand it. You're you and the smell of it. When you look at these ugly things, you're reminded in this world that Allah Azza wa Jalla just like in this world he gives you a snapshot, a little picture of jannah he'll also give you a little picture of what jahannam he'll also give you a picture of jahannam he'll tie physical realities to spiritual realities he'll do that for you all you know over and over again so even things that don't physically benefit you are still a reminder for you in nafi dhalika la tadhkiratan la dhikra you know it is a powerful reminder in this for you in that for you and that for you and by the way a reminder is always something of benefit fadhkir in nafa'at dhikra A reminder is always of benefit. So the world and everything in it is actually a matter of benefit. Whether it's directly of benefit, like the animal and the skin of the animal and the flesh of the animal and the milk of the animal and the ride of the animal, there's so much of the animal that is of benefit. Or there are animals that we can't eat or consume, or they're poisonous or dangerous. Even they have benefit. If the benefit is in physical, then the benefit is what? Spiritual. And since the human being is both of these things. So Allah Azza wa Jalla created this earth to benefit both parts of our existence the physical part of our existence and the spiritual part of our existence